I am here under oath to correct the record, to answer the committee's questions truthfully, and to offer the American people what I know about President Trump. It was my experience that Mr. Trump inflated his total assets when it served his purposes, such as trying to be listed amongst the wealthiest people in Forbes and deflated his assets to reduce his real estate taxes. Elections have consequences. Just ask Donald Trump. Just days after Michael Cohen made those comments to the House Oversight Committee in February 2019, New York Attorney General Letitia James began investigating Donald Trump and his business. Today, Michael Cohen took the stand in a Manhattan courtroom as a key witness against Donald Trump in the civil fraud trial brought by Attorney General James. This is the first time Trump and Cohen have faced each other in five years. Regarding Michael Cohen's testimony, the New York Times reports, quote, I was tasked by Mr. Trump to increase the total assets based upon a number that he arbitrarily elected. Mr. Cohen testified, saying that it was his responsibility to increase those assets in order to achieve the number. Mr. Trump, he said, would meet with Mr. Cohen and another lieutenant and direct them to reverse engineer the statements to reach Trump's desired net worth and return to him once they did. The accusation prompted a full-body scoff from Mr. Trump, who spent much of the testimony alternately fiddling with his phone and crossing his arms. Mr. Trump's scowl was soon replaced by a blank expression as he frequently consulted with his lawyers. Joining us now, Adam Klosfeld. He is the senior legal correspondent for The Messenger. He was in the courtroom for today's proceedings. Tim O'Brien, senior executive editor for Bloomberg Opinion and author of Trump Nation, The Art of Being the Donald. He is the host of the Bloomberg podcast Crash Course and an MSNBC political analyst. Thank you both for being here. Adam, before we get into Cohen's testimony today, tell us more about his and Trump's demeanor in court. You were in the room with them. I gather things were pretty chilly between the two. That would be an accurate way of putting it. Now, it's as you mentioned, Jonathan, the first thing to really remember about today's testimony is that it's five years in the making. These men have not been in a room together for half a decade. And so a lot of us were wondering, how are they going to react? Uh, what's going to be, are they going to lock eyes when they enter the courtroom? And it was a very chilly reception. Uh, Michael Cohen wa entered the car courtroom and just ascended to the witness stand, no eye contact. And it was basically all business. And the first major a uh, piece of testimony was the one that you just displayed to viewers. It's basically the heart, the crux of the AG's case, saying that the former president inflated his assets when it's uh, to suit his business purposes. And that more importantly, that he w basically asked uh, Cohen and Alan Weisselberg, the former CFO, to reverse engineer the financial statements to meet his net worth aspirations and to reach that inflated number, um, as the attorney general says, uh, for uh, for business purposes on to banks and insurers. So that was the core mm -hmm. of the testimony. And it was very chilly at the outset. And when that line landed, it elicited that reaction that mm -hmm. you read out earlier. And Tim, when it comes to people who could testify against Trump, there are aren't many who have as much potential dirt on him uh, than Michael Cohen, is there? Well, uh, you know, Alan Weisselberg is sort of the, you know, the the keeper of, of, of the closet that's full of financial skeletons. You know, uh, the, the people who made decisions inside the Trump organization uh, with Donald Trump's blessing were people like Alan Weisselberg, Jeff McConney, Jason Greenblatt. Michael Cohen was a fixer and an enforcer. Uh, he had some knowledge of real estate, so I think, you know, Trump would consult him about what kind of devices they use to inflate his assets. Um, so he's a material witness. Um, I think the lesson, though, of, of Michael Cohn is that he is the latest in a parade of people who have turned on Donald Trump. And Donald Trump has spent decades uh, inculcating one-way loyalty among the people who surround him, he corrupts them or they're easily corruptible. And 
And now he's landed in, in a series of courtrooms uh, where people who have advised him are now turning on him. Michael Cohn was on display doing so today. Um, but it's also happening in the Georgia mm -hmm. case with Jenna Ellis and Sidney Powell. And uh, and I think that Trump is is getting progressively put in a corner by this dynamic. And that's why you see him huffing and puffing, because all he is left to really do at this point is in, in, the, in a courtroom is try to, you know, court public opinion rather than the rule of law, because the, the outcome of this particular case right now, it was foretold weeks ago when 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 um, Judge Angoran said, I essentially think that, you know, you're guilty, you're going to lose your business licenses and your career in New York is going to be over. So right now, all we're debating is what the magnitude of the penalty is going to be. And Michael Cohn is just part of an accretion of evidence that shows how flagrant Trump and the Trump Organization were about these matters. I think the other key thing, Jonathan, is Donald Trump was not just an innocent bystander. He was orchestrating these. And that's a common thread in all of these cases. Mm -hmm. he, is, he is the mastermind of the things he's being prosecuted for. He's not simply taking advice.